Okay, it's section 2.6a. The title is the derivative. The derivative is part of one of the branches of calculus called differential calculus. So this is pretty much what we'll be doing for the rest of this course, and that is differential calculus. The history behind this was in order to find the slope of a line is easy to do. As you know, it's just change in y over change in x. Okay, or delta y over delta x, slope of a line. And this line has constant slope. But if you're looking at any curve, let's say a curve looks like this, and you want to know how fast the y values are changing, you would need to, uh, something called a slope. But the slope of a curve has to be defined using the concept of a line. So what kind of line would you be able to do that, do that for us? Let's say you want to know how fast the function is changing at this point A, then you would try to get a line called a tangent line right there, and be able to, if you're able to find its slope, then that'll tell you how this curve is changing at that point. Okay, so the derivative is basically the slope of the tangent line. So derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Now how do we derive this? Well, we're going to pause real quick and do an activity. So you can pause this video and go grab the sheet of paper that's on web assign and we'll try to do this by hand. So we have the slope of a curve we're going to try to get. What we have here is this red curve. Okay. Our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line to this curve at the point 1, 1. And grab a ruler, if you have one, and we're going to connect each pair of points given below with a ruler. So we're going to take 1, 1 and 6, 36, and we're going to connect those two points. So 1, 1, 6, 36. You may have to zoom out camera. So it looks something like that. All right, so knowing your formula for um, slope from algebra, you know that you need to subtract the y's. So it's 36 minus 1 divided by 6 minus 1, which is 35 over 5, which is 7. Now h, h is how far you are from the x value. So we, our goal is to get the slope of the tangent line right here. But we're trying to make some approximations using lines that cut through the curve. Okay, How far were we when we went from 1 to 6? We were 5 units away. Okay, those 5 units away from 1 to 6. And that's what h is. So h is how far you went away from 1. So h is 5 units. Alright, let's do it again connecting the point 1, 1 with 5, 25. So 5, 25 is there. We'll connect it and we get a different line. So we're trying to get as close to the tangent line as possible by getting these, these other lines, we call them secant lines, you know, as close and close to the tangent line as possible. So back to this table to find the slope, change in y, 25 minus 1 over change in x, 5 minus 1, which is 24 over 4, which is 6. And this time, the x's were 4 units apart. So you can continue this and do more of these lines, connecting 1, 1 with 4, 16 this time, 4, 16. And then you would do 1, 1 with 3, 9. And at the same time, calculate the slope. So here it's change in y, 15 over 3, which is 5. The x's were 3 units apart. Change in y, 9 minus 1 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. Slope is 4. 2 units apart. And then we get pretty close. 2, 4 on the curve. It's 2, 4. We're going to connect it with the point 1, 1. Now this, the slope of this is getting pretty close to the slope of the tangent line that we're looking for. So it's 4 minus 1 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, slope is 3, the x's are 1 unit apart. 
Now, the point is that we can actually get closer and closer to 1 comma 1. I mean, we could have gone 1.5, half a unit away on the x-axis, and then this would have been 2.25 or something. Okay, so this, these y values are getting from the curve whose equation is actually y equals x squared. Okay, but let's move on and try to get to the center of this section. So we want to write an expression for the slope between these two ordered pairs. Okay, so it's change in y over change in x. So m is f of x plus h minus f of x all over x plus h minus x. Change in y over change in x. These x's subtract away. And so you just have an h on the bottom. Now from this picture, you might realize that as these distances shrink, so as the h gets smaller and smaller, your slope is getting closer. As h gets smaller, the slope is getting closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. So to fill in the blanks, as h approaches 0, the slope of the of the secant line. Secant lines are those far away lines that we were drawing. Approaches the slope of the tangent line that we were seeking. To write this in limit notation, we say that the limit as h goes to 0 of that expression, which should look familiar to you, it's a difference quotient that we saw in cha earlier in chapter 2. So this is the slope of the tangent line. m tangent equals that. We call this the derivative. Okay, we call this the derivative of f of x. And we denote it <coughs> as f prime of x. We put a little dash. That's the notation for the derivative. <coughs> Okay, so back to our notes here. I want to explain what we just did with this concrete example. And it's a general case. What we were doing is we were looking at where's my pen. We were looking at finding this tangent line slope. Okay, so I'm going to draw a fresh graph here. If this is a point P and we needed the slope of the tangent line, what we were doing is reaching to a point further away q and drawing what's called the secant line okay so this was x and this was f of x we went h units away to this point x plus h so the y value there was f of x plus h and then as we sh dis shrunk this distance as we move this point closer and closer q got closer and closer to p so the secant line kept changing and getting closer and closer to the tangent line that we needed. Okay, so the pairs P had an ordered pair x comma f of x, which is y, and Q's points co coordinates were x plus h and f of x plus h. And so the slope of PQ is change in y, okay, this minus this divided by change in x. When you subtract this, the x's cancel out and you just get h. And it is this that as h goes to 0, that's your difference quotient, it becomes a slope of the tangent line and we call it f prime of x, the derivative. All right, now the homework starts off with some warm up type questions. So the next worksheet you'll see should look something like this. Okay, with a little graph for 2.6. It's called TV viewing patterns. It says the following graph shows the percent of house US households watching television during a 24 hour period on a weekday. T equals 0 is 6 a.m. But computing the slopes of the respective tangent lines estimate the rate of change of the percent of households watching TV at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So this is 0, which is 6 a.m. So 4 p.m. would be how many hours later? Well, let's see. 6 a.m. 
to 6 plus 6 is 12. Okay, that would be 6 p.m. to go back. So this would be it. This would be 4 p.m. So at this point, you already have in the picture a tangent line drawn to you for you on this curve. So there's your tangent line. And it already has a triangle with a rise over run. So for 4 p.m., you can see that it's 12.3 divided by 4, which you can put in your calculator. 12.3 <coughs> divided by 4 is 3.075. What's the meaning of this? This is talking about the percent of households watching TV over time. Okay, so as you can see, it's increasing because 6 o'clock people are coming home from work, catching the news or something like that. What about 11 p.m.? Where would 11 p.m. be? It would be 7 hours after 4 p.m. <coughs> that would be somewhere here. And you can see this gray line <coughs> corresponding to T2, the second tangent line. And again, it's already drawn for you. And you can see here there's a triangle. There's your rise. Actually, it's a fall. It's negative 42.3 over run, which is 2. Put this into your calculator. <coughs> we get negative 21.15. So once again, you can see that this is negative because the curve is decreasing. And you can see that people are getting ready for bed. Not as many people are watching TV. So, so that's an idea, okay? We're not really doing much calc here, but just looking at graphs and coming up with an approximate value for rate of change. On the back side, I have a couple more questions to get warmed up with this concept of derivative. Now, the, the book calls it the four-step process. Up here, I'm going to write, what is f prime of x? What we got from the previous worksheet, it's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So the four-step process breaks it down, and it has you compute this first. That's step one. Then step two, it has you compute that. Step three, the difference quotient. Step four, the entire limit. Okay, so step one, I'm going to repeat. You're going to just compute f of x plus h, just this piece. Now, you know what f of x is? It's two times anything squared, the input squared, minus five. In this case, our input is x plus h. Now, remember the order of operations. You cannot distribute the two. So you foil this out. It's x plus h times x plus h. Again, to save space, I'll go off to the side and do it. Okay, that's x squared plus hx plus another hx plus h squared. I'm going to copy that back here. It's x squared plus 2hx. Those two add up plus h squared. And then there's a minus 5. We'll clean this up. 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared minus 5. In step two, you just do the numerator of this difference quotient. So it's f of x plus h minus f of x. So you take this answer from the previous step, copy it down, and then it's minus okay, f of x, which is here. But I'm going to make a mistake. Hopefully I'll pause here and you can figure out what that mistake is. All right, I hope you realize that I needed a parenthesis here because this negative needs to distribute. So if you will remember to just distribute right away, you can and avoid the extra step. So it's minus 2x squared plus 5. And now things cancel out as they should and you're left with 4hx plus 2h squared. The next step involves this division, the difference quotient. So it is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So it's 4hx plus 2h squared all over h. We're going to do a little bit more work here, but looking ahead, if we were trying to do the limit as h goes to 0 right now, h is 0, h is 0. You get 0 on top and 0 on bottom. And these are the limits we had seen in section 2, 4. If you have a 0 over 0, that means it's not really undefined necessarily. It's indeterminate. So thinking ahead, I'm going to factor out an h. You have 4x plus 2h left over h. 
It's these two H's that were causing the 0 over 0 problem. But now we can cancel that out and happily go on to the last step where we compute the limit as H goes to 0 of whatever is left. Now H is not present here, so as H goes to 0, 4x is just 4x. But here you get 2 times 0 where H is, so you just get 4x. This is your derivative f prime of x, we found it, it's 4x. Now in the next chapter we'll find some shortcuts and totally skip through all these steps. But for now, we need to understand how this works. This is not the slope of the tangent line, but it's the rule for the slope of the tangent line. What I mean by that will be evident when I do part b. In part b, we want to find the equation of the tangent line to this function up here, okay, at this point. So to do that, the equation of a line, we'll use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If you recall, we saw this earlier, it's the point-slope form of the equation of a line. So this is your x1, this is your y1, but how do you get m? Well, we use the rule. m is going to be f prime at this x value. So you plug in that fixed point there, so it's 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So remember that this has to always be a constant, it can't be 4x. Okay, you have to find the value by plugging in the x value. Okay, we're all set, so it's y minus y1, which is negative 3, equals m, which is negative 4, times x minus x1, which is that. Clean it up, so you get x plus 1. You could stop here. Um, if you want to get y by itself, you can, but as far as I'm concerned, this is good enough. Graphically speaking, let's go and check this out, get a picture. 2x squared minus 5 is a parabola, as you might be aware, hopefully. And then I'm going to type in this equation. I'm just going to type this as it is, negative 4 times x plus 1. Then I'm going to subtract the 3 over, because I need y by itself on the calculator. Okay, so if I push trace and type negative 1, negative 1, that takes me there and we just found the tangent line to that curve at that point. Alright, I hope that made sense. There will be a couple more videos in this section, so stay tuned.